This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we talk about your careers, your money, and your life. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Big day here at Ramsey. Launch day. It's here. For another number one best-selling book. <laughs> That's my prediction. I like those predictions. Uh, From Paycheck to Purpose, Hit the Streets Today by Ken Coleman. And uh, we've been working on pre-selling this for a couple of months now, letting you guys know about it. It is now officially available. If you've already purchased one, it is in the mail, baby. We are shipping it that direction. So um, get ready. Here we go. Yep. I mean, this is cool. Uh, the book is From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to doing work you love. Now, here's the thing. What Ken has put his finger on and what he does with the Ken Coleman show and the website KenColeman.com is to keep you from getting stuck in the resume pile, Mm -hmm. showing you how not to do that. But more importantly, when you do make a move, make it strategically. And a lot of you are looking at making a move right now. Yeah. That you do it strategically strategically so that you don't end up in a worse situation from toxicity or lack of purpose. I hate my job. Don't spend your whole life, I hate my job. Yeah. Paycheck from paycheck to purpose. You need to get a paycheck, and you ought to get it doing something that has purpose. That's it. It's why we titled it that, because we want people to go from the universal view of work that I just work to live. Of course, you got to have a paycheck and provision. We want you to have a great paycheck. But we know that everybody, Dave, at some point in their life asks the question, what should I do with my life? Why am I here? And we don't have to teach ourselves to do that, just like you don't have to teach a toddler to take a toy or to say no. Why is that? Well, because we are souls and we long to make a difference. And so what we're doing in this book through a very practical seven stage process, think of it as climbing to your professional pinnacle where you're making the income that you want. You got that big shovel, you're out of debt, you're giving yourself away is the seventh stage. And it, it really works it beautifully with the seven baby steps, this idea of live like no one else so that later you can give like no one else. Well, what if you worked like no one else? or very few, where you showed up and you were doing something you were good at, hello, you actually enjoyed doing the work, and then the results of the work make you feel tremendously significant at the end of the day because you go, there's a connection to that. And we talk about that here at Ramsey Solutions all the time, work that matters because in this place we're crusaders to give people hope. And I want to give people hope as it relates to the thing they spend more time doing in their life than anything else besides family time and sleeping, it's work. Well, what if there was purpose in your work? What if you could do something that you were created to do and fill that void that so many people never get filled and make a great paycheck? That's what the book is. It's tremendously practical if you're just going, all right, I know what I want to do, Ken. I got that part. How do I level up? How do I keep moving up? Because we all want to be promoted. Well, we cover that. We, we cover the basics. How do I answer that question? What should I do with my life? Can I got that part? I just don't know how to get there. Well, we talk about that too. Get clear, get qualified, get connected, get started, get promoted, get the dream job. Give yourself away. Those are the seven stages. And here's what's beautiful, Dave, as you know. You and I are both in the dream job. You're further along than me. But those stages repeat themselves. Because when we get to the top of the mountain, folks... The view changes. We've been looking up the whole time. When we get to the top, we begin to look out. And in this book, the final chapter, Dave, you know, um, you know, I write about uh, the great explorer who gets to the top of Mount Everest, you know, and, and he says to his Sherpa, Sherpa climbing partner, he says, or after they've taken pictures and they've put a few things at the top of the mountain mementos, he sees another mountain range and he says, that's the one I want to climb. And that's the same thing. We as humans are humans who are driven by progress. 
uh, to to make a contribution. And so we don't just sit in our hammock and drink sun tea when we get to the dream job. The view changes. We look Assuming out. Assuming the commercial wasn't right. <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> Turns out that, that doers, they, they, they have another dream. Yeah. Hammocks aren't usually. They're nice for a season. It's okay. It's okay to rest the, and recuperate. It's why okay. we have weekends, right? Okay for the afternoon. Recreate. Yeah. yeah. So from paycheck to purpose. Yeah. Uh, Ramsey's next Ramsey Publishing's next number one bestseller comes out today. Yeah. You can pick it up on in bookstores in Target, that fine French store. You can go to um, uh, Amazon, and you can certainly go to RamseySolutions.com. And uh, we've got them here, and we'll get it right out to you. No delay in the shipping at all. It'll go out the day out the door immediately, if not sooner. So good stuff, good stuff. Very, very cool. So I went over today. Uh, we have 15 new people start at Ramsey Monday. Oh, yeah. So that we do two days of onboarding. Mm-hmm. And I always go in, or I try to go in if I can, second morning, and just listen mm-hmm. to what's going on. And, and it was really interesting hearing them go around the room after they've been here one day. And a couple of developers sitting in there, coding guys, top top shelf. I mean, senior developer level. Uh, and they're like, oh, so refreshing. <laughs> they were just uh, so refreshing to get to do my craft mm-hmm. in a situation where w- what the code I'm writing is helping people change their lives. Yes. The code I'm writing matters. It's not just in a you know in the ba- basement of some machine. Mm-hmm. That's just cranking out, and we don't work 80 hours a week, which is the coders. If you don't know out there, developers, web world, they just work, they work the snot out of them. Corporate America burns them up, and so they work 80, 90 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Most places here, we work 40 hours a week. We go home. We actually see our families and stuff like that. We do, yes, yeah. But it was just it was cool to hear those guys living out what your book is talking about. That's exactly right. That they found a way that that that, and these are. Major, oh, serious positions. Wildly I mean, talented senior, people. Senior devs are big time and um, can work anywhere they want to work in the world right now because the demand is so high. Yeah. And uh, but just to, they just it was just a sigh. Yes. Just a, a release of oxygen. It's like, whew, well, the reason feels is, so good is they realize that now passion and mission are coming into the picture when they walk in the workplace. Before, it was just talent only. They're very talented people. A lot of these people Dave's talking about come to us from big name companies. We're talking top, top, top talent here. But talent isn't enough because what we as human beings long for is a connection to the work. We want to actually love the craft. You know, you and I both love history. We love craftsmen. You know, when I was a kid, we would go to all these uh, historic presidential homes and things of that nature, and I would watch blacksmiths and silversmiths do their thing. These are craftsmen. They love the craft itself. That's passion. But it's more about what are you producing? And these people that are coding, they're producing hope on the other end, practical steps to give people freedom. That's mission. Versus the salt mines of the developer world. It's making a rich guy. Go into the mines. Right. That's right. Produce code. <laughs> Not here, baby. I love it. This is the Ramsey Show. paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The average family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we take your calls about your life, your money, your career on launch day for Ken's new book, From Paycheck 
to purpose, the clear path to doing work you love. I'm going to start off with Jennifer in Los Angeles. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Okay. So I am planning on moving out of state from, I'm from Bakersfield, actually moving out of state for work. And I have a home here. I'm on baby step six, working on paying this house off. Um, the market's really high right now. Um, so I'm, if I sell my house, I don't know where I should park my equity or if it's a good idea to just rent my house out. Um, because when I do move, I will be renting for a year until I figure out where I actually want to live. Um, so that's my question. Cool. So, uh, why are you moving? You're getting a new job where? Well, uh, I'm a nurse and there's just a lot of restrictions out here. I've wanted to leave the state of California for a very long time. And, um, I spent the last eight months working out in Texas and I really enjoyed it. So, so Texas, here we come, huh? Possibly, or Tennessee, Please, somewhere <laughs> okay. between there. <laughs> we hear that story a lot. Yeah, we, we, we are in Tennessee. We hear it a lot. Yeah, so yeah. it's very cool. Well, good. Uh, well, what I would do if I woke up in your shoes, which is, by the way, how I answer questions here, is if I, yes. knowing what I know, if I woke up just like you, what would I do? I would sell the house. Okay. Okay, a lot of reasons. The reason is, um, number one, like you said, the market's hot. And it's a mm -hmm. possible high point to, I don't know, it probably is going to go higher uh, long term. But right now you can get really, really good money out of it. You can sell it really easily. And you're going to pay no income tax on the growth. Okay. Did you make, are you going to make a profit of more than 250000 No, uh, it'll be close to, I think, after closing costs and everything, around 100000 Okay. Then you'll make all of that hundred without any taxes on it. Single okay. person, married filing jointly is five hundred thousand. You can make on your home. Uh, married or single person can make up to two fifty profit on your home over what you paid for it, and um, okay. with no taxes at all. And I would take that and I would put it in a money market account. Move to Texas, Tennessee, wherever it is. Start my nursing career. Once you decide you're going to put down roots in that location, um, mm -hmm. then I would start looking at, at purchasing. But long distance landlording is not a good plan. Uh, okay. It's very difficult. It's uh, I always laugh, and I got a bunch of real estate. I love real estate, but long distance landlording is always a good way to get somebody to change their Harley oil in your living room. And so okay. it's so just. Many so money market account, then not like a mutual fund. Unless you're going to leave it alone five years, I wouldn't use a mutual fund. No. But I, I okay. think you're going to move somewhere, and a year from now, you're going to start getting an itch to buy if you've decided mm -hmm. to stay in that city. Okay. Does that sound right to you? Uh, yes, it does. Now, I have one more question from that. Would if I, because I'm considering going and getting my master's degree. Why? And I don't, I'm sorry. Why? Yeah. Just to, um, ex I guess, grow my options as far as nursing goes, because um, I would like to get into, like, management, leadership, administration. Okay. That's a good why. Good. Well, yeah. I would use some of this money to pay for that then. And okay. let me just okay. tell you, just master's degrees are priced all over the map. Do not overpay for this little two-year degree. Absolutely. I yeah. plan not to. I plan to spend as little as possible. Yeah, and because where you went to school pain. will not determine whether you get hired. Okay. No one hires people based on famous colleges. That's absolute BS put out by famous colleges. Yeah. Yes. Jennifer, I'd ask, are you positive that you need a master's to get those leadership positions? I'm not positive, but I feel like the, I feel like I've been trying to like apply because I've been a nurse for a lot, almost 12 years sure. and I want to get out of bedside nursing sure. and I just, it seems like they want that degree. Sure. Well, again, um, it's a great why, but I want you to go from, I feel like it seems like to, I absolutely know that there's a higher percentage chance, much higher percentage chance if I have it versus not. And the reason I say this is because you have an opportunity here to get in as you move into a new place. You've got 12 years experience, very talented, and you express the desire to lead and begin to lead up and to show leadership that you're leading, being that 300. 160 degree leader, as our friend John Maxwell wrote a book on. Um, I, I would just look into that, and, and if it's the best way, 
then then do it. If it's the only way, do it. If it's not either one of those two, then uh, hustle. And save yourself some time and money on that yeah. master's degree. Sometimes people have a, an illusion that a degree is necessary for something when it's not. That's Ken's point. And so really dig into it. Start talking to people in the role that you want to be in yeah. and find out if they, how many of them actually have master's degrees and how much of a barrier it is to not have one. So, um, because sometimes it's just like, I don't feel secure. I don't feel confident. And so I'm going to get this degree and that's going to make me confident. Not really. Um, <laughs> well, you so, hire a lot of leaders, Dave. We'll just put this to the test. Yeah, I, I don't. Master's degree is nice. You respect it, but that doesn't factor I, into the decision. Not, not at all. Yeah. I mean, 2%, 5%, whatever. I mean, right. I mean, a master's in business is a great, Very MBA impressive. is a great, it's a great degree. It's a good field of study. But, and we've got some of them on the team. Um, and they're, they're smart and they're good. It's all, all great, but I didn't hire them for that. I hired them because I could see in their eyes and in their mannerisms and in the interview process that they were going to be able to lead people. Yeah. And that is usually not taught in the classroom, by the way. So, um, but you've got to get that built out. Keith is with us in Philadelphia. Hi, Keith. Welcome to the Ramsey show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I had an HSA question. Um, I just wanted to know if I should open one up this year. Uh, I um, I already maxed out my Roth 401k. I maxed out the uh, Roth IRA. And, but I'm only being, I'm only able to do that because I've been working a lot of overtime at my job. So when I go back to say the overtime dies out, uh, I just wanted to know, should, do I need an extra retirement savings vehicle or should I just uh, stick with the 401k and IRA stick with the 401k and the IRA the HSA is fine to use for saving money long term I've used mine that way but that's way down the road of stuff you worry about the HSA is a health savings account it has it's tied to your health insurance program are you currently in a high deductible plan that allows an HSA no, I'm not in the plan, but because it's open season, I was... You could jump over into that over. plan. Are you in a PPO now? Yes. Yes. Okay. How much does it save you a month on the insurance to go to the HSA? Well, I know the biweekly premiums would be maybe twenty, thirty dollars less a paycheck. Okay. So um, like sixty bucks. And, yeah. And so, yeah. what are we talking? Six, seven hundred bucks a year, say less expensive. How much greater is the deductible? Um, that I don't know. I, I rarely see a doctor. I mean, no, it doesn't matter. Good, you, you need to know yeah. what the deductible is. Okay. Cause uh, if you've got a $200 the, deductible uh, now and you're going to a $5,000 deductible for a $600 savings, that might not be a plan. The HSA works really, really good for people like you that are very healthy or for people that are chronically ill and always blowing through their, uh, deductible because it has a, most of them have a hundred percent after you blow through the deductible. And so there's no copay. Uh, I don't know what yours is, but I have an HSA on me. We offer both at my company to my team, and about 90% of the team is on the HSA because it's cheaper premiums, and if you choose to, you can save money over there. I'm less concerned with you saving money over there than I am just get, getting the right health insurance in place and not paying too much. But if you can cover that high deductible with your emergency fund and save six, 700 bucks a year, by moving over to that HSA while it's open season. I would look at doing that, dude, if you're healthy and things are going well. But I would not do it because of the savings element. The savings element is just some extra goodies. Uh, I, I do it, and I fully fund it, but I, I want you to get your house paid off and that kind of stuff. I want you to concentrate on baby steps four, five, and six before we start worrying about that too much. This is The Ramsey Show.
What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. of Ramsey Solutions on the Dead Free Stage. Jonathan and Grace are with us. Welcome, guys. How are you? Good. Great. How are you doing? Great, man. Where do y'all live? Uh, we live in Mar Miramar Beach, Florida. Oh, it's fun. Near Destin. Cool. Welcome to Nashville. Good to have you guys. Thank you. Thank you. So, all the way up here to do a debt-free scream, how much have you paid off? Uh, we paid off $124,693. Cool. How long did that take? 26 months. Wow. And your range of income during that time? Uh, somewhere around 140 to 160. Cool. What do you guys do for a living? CPAs. Mm -hmm. Both of you? Both of us. All right. Very good. Fun. So what kind of debt was this $125,000? Well, we had a cell phone to pay off for about 600 bucks. We had a credit card for almost 14000 a car loan for about 18000 and then... $92,000 was our mortgage. Oh, Whoa. you paid off your house! <laughs> Look people. at it, weird, weird people! Weird people. <laughs> CPAs with a paid-for house. Go, baby! I love it. Very cool. Good for you guys. Thank you. That's got to feel great. Feels awesome. I it's bet. surreal, but it feels yeah. pretty good. Pretty amazing. How long have you guys been married? I'll let him answer that. No. <laughs> 12 uh, years. Almost 12. Yeah, 12 years. So. Jonathan, this is a test. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't don't mess it up on the radio, man. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, 125,000 house and everything in 26 months. Couple of CPAs, been married 12 years, but something happened there. Oh, two and a half years ago. What was the wake up call? Got you plugged in on this Ramsey stuff, and you guys went hog wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've we've always kind of. Um, uh, we, we've kind of been normal. We've used a credit card to pay, you know, pay everything to get the points, you know, like smart people. Mm -hmm. uh, laugh, uh, laugh. <laughs> laugh, laugh. Yeah. And, uh, we, you know, we've, we've always uh, felt like we've made decent money, but we're always kind of wondering where it went. And so we lacked intentionality with our, um, with our spending and our budgeting. And, um, like 2018, I found out, I just found out I made partner in my firm and, um, Things thought things were going really well, and I got kind of caught up in this uh, NFL um, daily fantasy and winning some good money and putting more and more into it, and then, you know, hit the mother of all dry spells about halfway through the season, and uh, I was kind of putting a lot on the credit card every every weekend to play. And, uh oh. Uh, <laughs> around the right after the Super Bowl, I remember seeing the credit card bill is going to be almost fourteen thousand dollars. That was one month. <laughs> And uh, we had just wiped out Her most... Grace doesn't look happy right now. <laughs> no. As she yeah. recounts it, she didn't chuckle. No, <laughs> no. it was not a laughing matter. Yeah. <laughs> and so I remember going to talk to her about it, and I had already been starting to kind of trying to figure things out. I'd already started to listen to the podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, listen, this, this next credit card bill is going to wipe out all of our savings. She's like, no, no, we just paid the $13,000 credit card bill. I was like, no, <laughs> that was last month. <laughs> this, so uh, this one's going to wipe out all of our savings. But I think I, think I have a plan that we can, we can get on and, and really buckle down. And so it was kind of my mismanagement, my irresponsibility that pushed us over the edge and gave us our I had it moment. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Watching watching uh, my wife cry after telling her that was uh, was really eye opening, mm -hmm. and uh, it gave me the the drive and the push to submit to the to the plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, we bought the total money makeover and read it to each other every night until we were done, and then we were gung ho. Yeah. Wow. 
That's powerful. Mm. You guys are probably a little bit like me. Maybe you're not. I don't know. But I, I've got a degree in finance, and they don't teach us. Well, when you get a degree, you can get a CPA, I mean, a certified public accountant, and they don't teach you personal finance. They don't, right. You know, we learn, you know, debits and credits. Uh, you know, we, we learn uh, GAP, you know, generally accepted accounting principles. We learn uh, financial principles for corporate America and for stock trades and all these other things. But uh, the idea of living on less than you make or the idea that credit cards suck or the idea is that uh, student loans don't have to be forever, uh, they don't talk about that. And we walk out of there with a degree in business, right. finance, accounting, and we don't know beans about how to live. That's it's true. true. And, it, and yet I feel, I kind of felt, even though I wasn't taught, I still felt like I should have known it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got a finance degree and I'm stupid. Right. I'm broke. I mean, that's how I felt shame from that a little bit. Mm-hmm. I got two CPAs here, you know, and the wake up is freaking football betting. I mean, my God, you know, I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's just that stuff's not taught anywhere. And uh, we need to insert these uh, Ramsey classes in the uh, business curriculum at these colleges, I guess. But way to go, you guys. Thank you. Way to go. You took a really messy, nasty, scary, uh, angry, frustrating situation and turned it into wonderful. Your house is paid off. You rock. Yeah. You are heroes, man. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's so cool. Thank you. Yeah, I just wonder, I, you know, I really appreciate you, Jonathan, sharing your story. I mean, it's pretty vulnerable stuff, and there's a lot of emotion there. When you guys got, you know, full on into this process and you walk it out, now you're debt free. Um, that football betting, that was kind of pulling something. There was something in there that you, it was, it was engaging. Now that you're on the other side, you're debt free and you walk through that pain and fix that stuff. What are you excited about now? What is, what is your mind on when it comes to money now? I think uh, learning, learning patience and learning, that, that, that kind of tapped into my, uh, I've always been trying to, you know, figure a way to get rich quick, a way to make a quick profit, a windfall profit, um, and just uh, learning that, uh, you know, the 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 tortoise always wins, right? Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race, and uh, and learning to be patient. I've still struggled with that even through this process, you sure. know, just yeah. following the plan and not trying to jump ahead and. Uh, so patience was was a big thing to learn for me. I got to ask Grace too. Two CPAs when you actually started to get together on this and got in the budget meeting. What's it like with two nerds in there? Was it a true two nerd situation? Um, I'm kind of more of a balanced. You know, I'm kind of uh, free spirit and a nerd. Okay. So I'm kind of in the middle. So he's he's the nerd. Okay. So I think a first budget meeting. I think I might have cried. I'm like, we're doing <laughs> what? We're, we're spending only this much on this. <laughs> so we definitely it took us couple months to kind of mm-hmm. you know get down to what the budget should look like and what will work and um and you know what we need to spend i mean grocery and eating out that was like two our major spending you sure. know, other than the fantasy football but uh, <laughs> um so kind of nailing down to you know what we need to do to kind of make it work and at the time i we just found out we were pregnant with zoe my two-year-old so it's kind of going through pregnancy and hormones and you know cutting spending and that's when we you want to spend you know you want to have a new baby come and you want to buy new things you're excited and yeah you know so it was kind of it was a difficult time kind of going through it but um i mean patience and just trusting the system and um just you know steady wins the race so we kind of had and i had my moments where i'm like okay I, i can't do this anymore we you know and he would be like well just just you know just let's stick to it and see you know a few more months and we'll get there and it seemed like the 26 months were never gonna you know Mm. come it was just kind of a long process but um Mm. but we made it so what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is you paid off your house and everything in 26 months um let's see um I mean, patience and just sit down and budget. I mm. mean, take off anything, the wants out of it, and just keep the really the needs that what you need to survive on day to day. You know, that, I mean, we went through, um, you know, not buying the kids gifts at, you know, birthdays or not, you know, all the gifts that we want to get them. So we'll get them like one thing instead of 10 things. Yeah. Um, just kind of the necessities. And um, I think that helps. And, just kind of working together and trusting each other and yeah. making sure that, you know, your spouse or your partner are, are on board. And, you know, if they start to fall out, you know, kind of have doubts to kind of encourage them and, yeah. and, 
All right, let's get the kids in there. What are their All names right. and ages? All right, we got Joel, who's six years old. Mm -hmm. And this is Gabriella, mm -hmm. who's four, and mm -hmm. Zoe is two, mm -hmm. and we have baby Madeline, who's going right. to be three months tomorrow. <laughs> and Weston right. couldn't be here. And he's, Weston, 125000 paid <laughs> off in 26 <laughs> months. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two. one. We're, We're debt-free! <laughs> yeah! What a fun family. That's awesomeness right there. Very cool. The personality is our co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. It is launch day for Paycheck to Purpose, his new book, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love. You can get it anywhere great books are sold. Go buy it today. You can get it at... Uh, you know, any of the great bookstores, you can certainly get it at RamseySolutions.com, uh, Amazon.com, wherever you want to go. We'd love to. It's 20 bucks here on sale. It's going to be a big week. He's been doing a bunch of major media and uh, going to be moving a whole bunch of these. This book's going to change some people's lives without a doubt. Brittany is with us in Greensboro, North Carolina. Hi, Brittany. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Sure. What's up? Yeah. Um, my husband it, wants to go back to school, and we're working the baby steps, and he wants me to be open to loans, student loans. And I don't want to, I do not want to do that. It absolutely terrifies me, and I don't know how to still support him, but stay on my ground about not getting into debt because we've already been working the baby steps, and I want to keep um, going forward in baby step two. Yeah. You're working the baby steps. He's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's he want to study? He wants to go into school social work. You want to go into debt to do social work? Yeah. Do you know what that pays? I, I know, I know. I don't want to pay that much money uh, in student loans to go into debt. I don't even want to pay that much money <laughs> to be a social worker. They don't pay anything. What's he make now? He's at about 20 now. He's a teacher assistant. How old is he? He is 30. Okay. Teacher assistant in a public school, and he wants to go into social work. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think Dave's right. I think I would expand the options. Certainly social work is one path, but there are multiple paths uh, to probably do what he enjoys most about social work. For instance, he probably has a heart for the counseling side of it, the helping, the advocating side. Does that sound about right? That sounds right. Yeah. Uh, what college, does he have any college education so far? associate's degree. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, uh, finishing out that the full degree, because he's already in the system, and getting that four-year degree finished would put him in a position where he could potentially move into some type of guidance counselor role or something along those lines. But I, I think he's got to research multiple options. But getting that uh, student loan, taking out loans to do a degree to do social work, it's just not necessary. Because quite frankly, he can cash flow that. I mean, we, we teach that here at Ramsey Solutions. So if he buckles down and is patient, right, you guys have got to get through the yeah. baby steps at certain points or he's going to have to work harder and he's going to have to cash flow his way through maybe a second job. But he doesn't need the loan. And it's, it's actually a bad business. It's not a good ROI. If that's what he really wants to do, taking out a loan for that is, is, is really a bad idea. So, Brittany, sometimes yeah. when people feel like they're stuck in a job, like he feels like he's stuck at this public school in this resource role. 
Right. They they go, oh, what I need is a degree. And that just pops into their head because that's what we've been telling people for a couple of generations. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. not necessarily a fact. What he needs is some clear direction on what he wants to be and what he wants to do exactly and then determine if a degree is absolutely necessary. Is there a way that he can make fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year instead of forty and not even have to get a degree to do it? Mm-hmm. Uh yes, there is. Yeah. Uh and maybe be in an area where he's serving the underprivileged in some way, which is what his heart is. And that's a good heart. And I'm not against social workers. Don't misunderstand me. But I, I, the number of people I've talked to that spent 200000 bucks on a master's degree in social work to make $38,000 worth of state makes me want to shoot somebody. That's just right. cray-cray. And I, I, over okay. the years of doing this, I've just seen a lot of people, they destroy their lives because they didn't lay out their dream in such a way that it didn't become a nightmare. And so I'm going to send you a copy of Ken's brand new book, the From Paycheck to Purpose. Tell him to read that. And then the other okay. book I'm going to give you is our book here called Debt-Free Degree mm-hmm. on how to go get a degree debt-free. And tell him to read that. And if he's not willing to read two books, he doesn't know, need to go to school. Right. Because at school, they're going to like require you to read books and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you catch the sarcasm, thank, thank right? <laughs> yes, I, I, I've said several of the things you all have said. <laughs> all right, you hold on. Kelly will pick up, and we'll ship those two out to you. But there's this mythical thing. It's not a genie in a bottle. If That's exactly what they, it is. They think, degree, here comes the genie. Hey, uh, the I grant you your three future. wishes. I, <laughs> yes, I grant you your three wishes. You now right. have a degree. You get to be whatever you want to be. Yeah. Before, you weren't going to be, mount anything, but now so you have true. got the genie. It's so that's true. That's a good, that's it's a good so line. That, uh, well, it's, it's really true. I hear true. Robin Williams' voice on the oh, Disney cartoon. Oh, right that's now, so yeah. good. And so that's the cultural pressure, folks. Make sure you catch that. That's what we've been told. We've been marketed to since the 50s that that's the only way to success. It's like the lie that you have to buy a house 20 seconds after you're an adult. Yeah, or you're, yes, you're wasting your you're credit You're wasting your money. You're, you're throwing wasting, your money down throwing the Throwing your money out the window. Yeah, and yeah. so you're exactly right. And that's, again, one of the major reasons why we wrote the book, uh, From Paycheck to Purpose. How do I figure out what the mountaintop is? That's where this gentleman's at. It might be social work. But how do you go from it might be, I think it is, to I know it is. And that's the stage one that we start with. Get clear. Get clear. Does it align with how I'm created? Does social work involve skills that I actually have or some raw talent that I can hone into skills? Do I love the work that if you read a description under social work, would that make your heart come alive if you spent 75% of your day doing that? And then the final piece is mission. Does it produce results? Does social work or that type of work produce results that fill your heart up with, hey, hey, this is significant to me. That's the ultimate test there. And if the answer is yes, go for it. Lindsay's in San Diego. Hi, Lindsay. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you. Hi, Dave. Hi, Ken. Congrats on that book launch. Thank I'm you. Excited to get my copy. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, quick question. My 13 year old son started working for a family friend a couple hours a week and earns about 40 to $60 a week. He wants to invest the majority of that money after tithing, obviously. Do you have a suggestion as to where he should park this money? <sighs> Um, well, here's the thing. The goal of this investment is not wealth. This is not much money, number one. Um, and, um, number two, it's not much money. So it's not going to turn into much money. (laughs) Okay. So the goal is to create knowledge and to reward his interest in the subject and to teach him what to do when he's an adult. And so I don't want to have him doing stuff that I wouldn't tell him to do if he's an adult because we're endorsing it by telling him to do it now. Okay. I mean, he could. Sometimes teenagers get in a little stock club or something and they'll buy and sell single stocks. But I don't tell adults to do that. I don't do it. So I don't really want to train a teenager that that's the proper way to do this. The problem that this presents is if I'm going to train him to invest in good mutual funds, you can get with a Smart Investor Pro and open up a mutual fund for $50 a month. 
and you be the custodian. He can't open an account until he's 21, but he, you can open it as in his name with you as the custodian. And um, he can have it automatically drafted, uh, get him a checking account, all of that, that. All of that would be good learning exercise. And he can learn to calculate the value of his shares and see what they do. Here's the thing. Over the period of 12 months, which when you're 13 years old is an eternity, there's not mm-hmm. going to be a lot of action. It's kind of boring. Okay. And that's the downside of this. But that's what I did with our kids. We, uh, we opened okay. them mutual funds. They could add to them, and we would show them how to calculate the shares. And one of the things we taught them was that it's a little boring. This wealth-building thing, it's slow and steady wins the race. It's not sexy. It's not jumping all over the place. It's not get rich quick. It's not something you get to brag to your friends. It's just kind of there. And uh, I don't want to train him to do anything else because that's what I want him to do. So that's what I did. Thank you, Lindsay. This is The Ramsey Show. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Subscribe or follow today wherever you listen to podcasts. your character you can have money and a career you are the hero in your story live from the headquarters of ramsey solutions broadcasting from the dollar car rental studios it's the ramsey show where debt is dumb cash is king and the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of the bmw as the status symbol of choice I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Ken Coleman is my co-host today, Ramsey personality here on the air. We're answering your questions about career, about money, about life. 888-825-5225. Now, Launch day for his new book. It is now available in stores, soon to be another national bestseller, From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love. Ken's second book, his first, was a number one bestseller, and this one I suspect will be as well, or very close. If not, we're right there at it. It's going to happen, and and it's good. It's good. And those of you helping out there by buying the book, we appreciate it. That's helpful. Um, And and the book is going to change your life. It's got the seven clear steps to find and to engage in work you love. And uh, you spend the vast majority of your waking hours at work. So don't do it doing something you hate. Yeah. 55% of Americans right now are actively considering moving on. And of that group, two-thirds of them don't know what they're looking for. And so there's a tremendous amount of frustration right now uh, with folks. And it starts with, let me get clear about what my options are. What are the pathways? And then how do I go about doing it? You know, so let's overcome these myths that you got to get a college degree or a master's degree or higher degree just to be able to move forward. Can you do it while in the baby steps? The answer is yes, too. These seven stages work in lockstep with the baby steps. They don't take you a different direction. And there are times where you have to pause uh, the, the, the seven stages to doing work you love, that purposeful work. But you can get there. The dream is still going to be there. So we're really excited about the book, and it's going to help a lot of people. And um, for those, Dave, who are looking for a quicker kind of, all right, I want to I want to turn the book into a field guide up the mountain. We've also got that Get Clear Career assessment at RamseySolutions.com that goes with the book, helps you dive deep in about a 20-minute assessment and get really, really clear and start to move forward. Great that, tool. That thing is, um, man, almost 10,000 people have already taken that. Yes. It's pretty incredible. So from paycheck to purpose, the clear path to doing work you love, anywhere great books are sold, including RamseySolutions.com, Amazon, the fine French store Target. And, of course, Barnes & Noble. Anywhere great books are, you can find this book. Frankie's with us in Phoenix, Arizona, starting off this hour. Hi, Frankie. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave and Ken. Um, Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I'm in a quandary. Um, I am 75 years old. I have no children. 
I have a house that I live in, and I have two rental properties. One is completely paid off, and the other I owe 6000 on. Um, so I'm able to supplement my Social Security, and between the two houses, uh, if I have it at market rent, which one is at market rent now, the other one uh, is not yet because I'm in the process of rehabbing it while my tenant is still in there. So that's been a long process. He wants to buy it, and that's why he wanted to stay in it. So when that other house is up to uh, when it's completed, the renovation's completed, I will have about 30000 in it. Because the house was built in 1955, so it needed a whole lot of updates and renovation. And so I'll be netting a total of a little over 20000 a year from the two rentals that are paid, will, be, will be paid off. Um, but the tenant wants to buy it. Market value right now is I paid 70000 for it 13 years ago. I have the same tenant for 13 years because I've kept his rent below market. So now I've offered it to him twice before to buy it. He said no. Now he wants to buy it because he knows I'm going to up the rent. And so, uh, I, <laughs> and you so are one I'm sharp cookie. To, <laughs> so I'm trying to decide: sell it or keep it. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's know. just stop. I don't want to be mean to him or anything, but what he wants is not relative to me. All, I know. That, all that matters to me is what you want. So right. f- you're 75. When you're 80, right. do you want to own these two rental properties? It sounds to me like you're pretty good at it, and you may want to own them. Well, I have um, the, the, in different states. And the one that's cash flowing very well, um, I have a wonderful property manager. He's great. And so I trust him completely, and he's doing a really good job for me. Uh, This other one that's not quite paid off and has a tenant in it, I've been managing it from a distance because I've had this same guy in it for 15 years. It's in Dallas. Okay, and you're in Phoenix. All right. Sounds Uh Sounds to me like you might have an itch to sell it. Well, and its market value right now is mm-hmm. between one eighty and one ninety, and I paid seventy for it. Right, so you're gonna have some capital gains. A lot, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but not two hundred and fifty. So I, I don't have to wait. Well, of course it's a rental, so I yeah. don't have any write off exactly. on that. So exactly. yeah, whatever you and gains. you probably have adjusted your, you probably written off depreciated your basis down to nothing. So it's probably all. Oh, gain. Yes. it's probably all gain. Yeah. Yeah, and, and um, <laughs> yeah. so it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a thirty thousand dollars tax bill. Yes, I'm aware of that. Okay, All right. The, the question but I'm still, asking is this: know, regardless think... of what your tenant wants, what does Frankie want? Well, you know, before he wanted to buy it, I'm thinking, well, I've built myself a pretty good annuity. I mean, <clears throat> I'm not have to pay any. You know, when you buy annuities, I think. So that's not reasonable for me. And so I feel like I built myself this annuity <clears throat> by having these two properties. Now, yep. when I'm 85, yeah, but when I'm 85, do I want to mess with it? I don't know. I don't <laughs> think so. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's up to you. It's a good time to sell if you want to sell, but you don't need to sell by the cause the market's telling you to sell, and you don't need to sell because the tenant wants you to sell. You need to sell because you want to sell. And here's the thing. After talking to you for just a few minutes, you're sharp. You already know down inside what what feels right to you. And you can trust your instincts, Frankie. After talking to you, you got good instincts. That's right. That's why she said quandary. She's going, I know what I want to do, but I'm feeling pressure somewhere else. And I think she's feeling pressure because she's a nice lady. I think she's going to keep it five more years and then she's going to sell it. I think so, too. That's, That's what the I think she's going to do. But I, yeah. I think this tenant, want, she wants to keep this guy happy. And you That's know what? Right. He's been happy long enough. He's been there 13 years at reduced rent. It's time for him to not be happy. Yeah, tough, man. Go, go. You're a big boy. <laughs> go buy yourself a house somewhere else. It's your house. That's <laughs> not greedy. It's yeah. just doing business. I love it. I mean, I, I, we, we raise rents on ours every single time they come due, even if it's 20 bucks. 
because I don't want anybody thinking that it's going to be locked in that way for 10 years. No, or Dave, it's because you're an evil slum lord. That's Just me. Just admit it, you evil, heartless Some capitalist. Really nice slums. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really nice slum. Yeah, there you go. But I am heartless and greedy. You all, oh, there's no question, question about that. Without question, yes. No doubt about it. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. We're coming into the time of year where money stress can pile up. Yep, Christmas is coming at us. The list of Christmas gifts is uh, starting to build. And extra travel expenses. Oh, and extra food. Yeah, all of this. All of it's got to get done. And what if the money was something you never had to worry about? What if you never worried about Christmas? Well, it's actually possible. You just need a plan. And that's what you get when you become a Ramsey Plus member. We'll put you into Financial Peace University, our class that's taught just under 10 million people, where you'll learn the plan that's helped millions save for emergencies, pay off debt fast, and build wealth. And then you'll put that plan into action by budgeting with the premium version of every dollar. When you're not always worried about money, you get to live the life you really want. So, Christmas, give yourself a gift that'll actually help you get there faster. Let's do a free trial to Ramsey Plus, which will get you into Financial Peace University and into every dollar. A free trial. Text TRIAL to 33789. That's TRIAL to 33789. Blinds.com gives us our question of the day. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. With free samples, free shipping, and new promos every month, you're going to save even more. Always use the promo code RAMSEY. Blinds.com, a great American company. All right, talk about it, Ken. All right, Sean is uh, giving us the question today. He's in Wisconsin. I'm currently working for an HVAC building automation controls company at a local branch. As a project manager, I'm a mechanical engineer and have been working in the automation field since college. Over the last four and a half years, I've grown to hate the industry. I feel like I... I've made a major mistake taking on the project manager's role. I'm learning that managing other projects and people is not a strength of mine, and I find that it is nearly impossible not to take work home with me. I'm more of a people pleaser and tend to not delegate work well. What are some good ways to qualify for work that would ultimately need more education to be qualified? In parentheses, he puts programming technical support while not going into debt. Okay, so... The way it's worded, it's a little fuzzy here, but if if you're looking to get into uh, programming tech support work, Sean, I can tell you right now, uh, you don't have to get a college degree. There are so many certification programs uh, and training programs that you can get uh, that qualified skill set and some experience to be able to get into that. But you're going to need to be patient and hang on. I know you're in a situation right now where you're being drained, uh, but we want to hang tight unless in that project management role, if you can replace that income right now in a temporary move, hourly work, doing something else to just get you out of that management role where he's kind of sucking the soul out of you, uh, but you're going to keep your same income or maybe make a little bit more in hourly temporary role, do that while you're getting qualified. But 
Dave Bethel Tech's a great example. They uh, they sponsor uh, the Ken Coleman Show. They're part of the Ramsey Network, and this is a great program. Nine month program less than $15,000. They allow you to cash flow your way through it because they support and believe in what we do. And uh, their people are starting out making sixty-five to $70,000. A coding school. Coding, programming, technical. Uh, just You don't have to have any prior experience or uh, revealed skill set. They can train you for technical jobs. When we look at programming, any type of technology work, that's just one example. Do your homework. Kick the tires. A lot of great programs that are affordable and not that time-consuming to get qualified. So I'm wondering, mechanical engineer. It's what his background is, yeah. If there isn't a different application for that that wasn't merely project managing automation stuff. Yeah. And mechanical engineers can, he may be spatially minded. He may be able to see things in 3D. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, there may be a whole lot of different applications for his existing. Tons of versatility there. Of his existing uh, degree. Yeah. That would be different than what he's doing. I, I mean, he's got he's stepped into a very narrow nuance of what he could be doing. I agree, and that's like we love those phone calls because then we dive into this and we go, okay, so you're in the two things that you said you don't like are the project managing, which is logistics in nature, and then the people stuff, which is leadership. He might just be a guy who likes to fix things with his head and hands. That mechanical part of the engineering, mm-hmm. and he's in this project management, which. It's got a lot he's of people stuff I mean, in it. Even if he's not fixing it with his hands, even if he's drawing a mechanical engineering That's piece correct. on the pad lots of options. and solving, you know, creating solutions by his uh, methodology, by, by creating the item, the yeah. mechanical engineering solution. Yeah. Um, I know we do a ton with mechanical engineers around here. We're wiring these studios, putting this stuff yeah. together. We're building this conference center up on the hill. We've had a, a outsourced mechanical engineering with the yeah. with architectural firms sure. because it's so much detail there. And we're, we had to solve a lot of problems yeah. there. And, and I don't know, but what that, you know, you don't have to be in a, a you know, a project management situation with no, that. No, not at all. It feels like he, this is one of those situations we hear a lot. I fell into this. Well, or I heard that it, you know, people are making a lot of money coding. Maybe I need to be a coder. There's that and too. so he jumps over to do that. I don't know. Maybe he yeah. needs to be a coder. That's okay. Yeah. If he does, I need I need some coders. So that's great. I mean, yeah. we need some programmers here. So yeah, that's a good point. We you, do. You know, but the uh, uh, you know, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Good stuff. The book is Paycheck to Purpose. It launched today, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love by Ken Coleman. Leanne is with us in San Antonio. Hi, Leanne. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So first, let me just say I pre-ordered Ken's book, and this call is really probably more for him. Oh, well, Good. thank you. Thank you. What's going on? So um, we're in baby step two, my husband and I, and he recently in June had to take a job that cut his pay in half. I have been a stay-at-home Why? mom for over – Why? Because he worked in um, – He's an electrician. He works on building tunnels in cities, transportation, and all those jobs have had dried up. And so he took a job with a company who does the same thing, but it's a private company, not unionized. He's excited for that job because he's getting older and is using all the knowledge that he's gained in all those years. But he cut our pay in half. So I've been a stay-at-home mom for 25-plus years, and I haven't been in the workforce, but our kids are grown, and I want to contribute financially to make up the pay cut that he took, but I've been out of work for 25 years, and I don't even know what to do. I mean, I homeschooled my kids. Sure. I did take a little job. Go ahead. How much money do we need to make for you? If you're making up that 50%, what's the number? Well, it it would be in at, I mean I think fifty would be less than what made up. I mean he made two fifty last year. He's making ninety two thousand this year. Okay, so you so you're trying to make fifty to a hundred is what would be making it up. But right now you've been out of the workforce for twenty five years. So here's what we start with. We start with the clues of talent. What do you do very very well? And you didn't lose that skill set. You might be rusty, but we want to start with talent. What do you really, really do well? And that's going to get you some clues. But I'm just curious. What would you do tomorrow if you knew the money was there and you knew you couldn't fail? Because for 25 years being a homemaker, your mind has wondered at some point. What would that be? Give me just one answer that you don't have to lock into. 
Um, I really enjoy, and I've done it, I, working in the industry with young people. Like I worked as a youth director at my youth camp or at our church. Um, what I really loved for a little bit, I was the executive director of the Crisis Pregnancy Center, okay. and I served on that board for 11 years, okay, and great. I really loved that work. All right, so we'll start there as one really good option. You've got a lot of experience and a lot of skill being an executive director, running a nonprofit. You've also worked in ministry, so you know those lanes. You know how to lead people. You know how to lead projects. I would be looking in those areas right now. This is not going to make up, though, that gap that your husband took, so I want to address that very, very quickly. But I'll get to that in a second. But, Leanne, I want you to, to be looking for opportunities, local ministries, uh, crisis pregnancy centers, nonprofits. Get in there. If you've got a volunteer to start to get in there. But I want to challenge your husband. Uh, as an electrician, a skilled electrician, I know he likes what he's doing, but he could be making way more. I would challenge him. Uh, unless you guys can absorb that pay cut, I'd be looking for a better electrician opportunity. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're ready to get out there and find a job you love, then you need to hear this. Job hunting can be stressful and time consuming, but my friends at ZipRecruiter have made the whole job search way easier. ZipRecruiter is rated the number one job site in the US by G2 and it's free. So how does it work? First, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Then create a free profile and let their technology do the hard work by finding and sending you jobs that are a great fit. And get this, ZipRecruiter pitches your profile to companies whose jobs match your skills and experience. If someone from that company likes your profile, they can personally invite you to apply for the job. So if you're ready for an easier job search, check out ZipRecruiter. Sign up for free right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Sign up today absolutely free and let ZipRecruiter work for you. personality is my co-host today open phones at 888-825-5225 zach and bronwyn are with us in savannah georgia says on my screen you guys are debt free congratulations thank you dave hi ken hi very cool how much have you paid off yeah so we uh we started at 86 a little over eighty six thousand. good deal how long did that take just well, it, it it took about ten months to get the eighty six um, paid off, but we started probably three years ago. Okay, ten months for eighty six thousand, and during that ten months, what was your range of income? Our income was one sixty. Uh, right now, about one ninety. Good. What do you guys do for a living? Um, I work for a construction equipment manufacturer here in Savannah, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm at the port. Okay, very cool. Good for you guys. Savannah's a great town. Very fun. So uh, $86,000 of what kind of debt? It's all consumer, um, and then 27,000 student loans. So we had 22 in credit cards and 37 in cars, and then um, the remainder student loans. Nice cars. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We got three kids, so. Big cars. Okay. All right, fun. So how long you guys been married? Ooh, five, five years. years yeah. <laughs> we both had to think about it. Yeah. So uh, what happened 10 months ago put you on this Ramsey stuff? Well, 10 months ago, really, I, I heard about you in 2018. I was actually 
pregnant with um, our second child and I was overseas. I actually was on a seven hour flight that pregnant and um, listened to your audio book, The Total Money Makeover. And I mean, the whole flight, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get off this flight because I've got to figure out how to pay off all this debt. I was running all the numbers in my head. So we Dave ished it, honestly, um, for a couple years. Clearly, we were preoccupied with new baby. And then 10 months ago, we realized after looking at our budget that we just made too much money to be, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. And, and when I looked at the numbers, we had paid year to date just on credit cards about $35,000. And I was like, but they're not even paid off. So all in all, like we'll pay up 57000 in credit cards. And what do we have to show for it? So it just like it flipped us on our end. And we we were like, we can't do it our way. We've got to go back to basics. So we signed up for financial peace um, online and did the Ramsey Solutions um, and started budgeting. And that made all the difference. Wow. I got to ask, Bronwyn, so you get off this plane. I could just see you going, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. You wanted to get back home <laughs> yeah. and get after it. Zach, she comes home all fired up. Did you jump right in and say, all right, okay, uh, sure. Yeah. yeah, that was how the first conversation, you know, while she was over there, we had, and then she had the audio. So I was, I was listening to it while she was sleeping, feeding the baby, listening to it. Um, and, and really, well, I'd say he got all in, but it was about, you know, 10 months ago where, where enough was enough. And mm. I, I was fully in, fully on board. So you guys, that's when you signed up for Financial Peace University and that's when you got on the Every Dollar app and everything. That's yes, right. Sir. Yeah. yeah that's you went to Ramsey really... Plus. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We, um, you know, we kind of like did it our way, Dave. We we kept our savings account up because we were nervous because we had kids and we had, you know, a lot of overhead to make up and every month and we didn't want to be in a bad place. But we were just very cautious. And then, you know, and really, I'm the spender and he's the, you know, he put me on a budget day one we met, I think. So. i love it well congratulations you guys very 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 well done how's it feel now that you're free um it it feels free and and free 10 months ago was a different meaning um you know if someone asked me now what it is to be free i mean it's 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 like taking off a bag of bricks and you didn't even know you were carrying them yeah really that's for sure so um what do you tell people the key? Now you've been through financial peace and then you actually did it. You paid off the 86,000. What's the key to getting out of debt? What are the things they need to do if they're listening right now? So, uh, my advice would take, take your wife or husband's Amazon card, hide it, throw it away, cut it up, <laughs> get that thing out of there. Guilty. <laughs> Sounds very specific, Zach. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Guilty. Disconnect uh, Amazon but say, Prime. <laughs> yeah. But definitely keep the momentum. Um, once you, once you, uh, pay off one thing, keep it going. Um, you kind of start seeing that the snowball, you know, to be cliche, the snowball really does just keep rolling and it, it gets exciting. The more you pay off, the more excited you get, the more fired up you get. So just, just keep, keep going, keep the motivation there. Very cool. Good stuff. You guys, we're proud of you. Where to go heroes. Those little babies Thank lives you. are changed because mom and daddy decided to take control of this money stuff. Very, very okay. cool. We got a copy of the Legacy Journey for you. Uh, that's the next chapter in your story to be Baby Steps Millionaires before you know it. And uh, we'll also send you an extra copy of the Total Money Makeover. You can give that away, and maybe they'll come off a plane somewhere and uh, <laughs> come home and go, we're doing this. That might work. You never know. Or they may use it as the world's largest and best coaster. It has been used for that on coffee tables all over America. But it so. rises again. <laughs> but it, ri- it always comes back. It has a second life. Yeah, yeah it always comes back. <laughs> when people need it, the book is just suddenly laying there. It's kind of amazing. All right, Zach and Bronwyn, way to go. Savannah, Georgia, $86,000 paid off in 10 months, making 160 to 190. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. All right, three, two, one. We're We're debt-free! Yeah! (laughs) That is how it's done. 
Very cool, you guys. Very cool. Very well done. David is in Salt Lake City, Utah. Hi, David. How are you? Doing great, Dave. Ken, it's great to talk to you, and I really appreciate all that you do. Sure. What's up? Well, my wife and I have hit some benchmarks in life, and right now we are energetically debating whether we should sell one of our rental houses or just buckle down and, and try and weather out the next two to three years. So we bought our first house about 24 years ago when we lived in Idaho. And shortly after that, I was transferred down to Salt Lake for work, but we kept the house thinking we would always move back to that. And, and we've just been renting it ever since. And um, we, the, the two big things going on in our lives right now is one is my wife has just started the first first semester of a two and a half year advanced degree program. So she's going to become a, a nurse practitioner. Good. And the second is that our renter in this Idaho house <laughs> has stopped paying the rent. So we're now in the process of evicting him and, and the house will soon be empty. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So with it being empty, you know, we, we started talking again, should we, clean it up, get it re-rented quickly, or is this the right time How to much, what's it worth? sell that house? Um, just a quick look at the real estate market. We think it would probably sell for about 300000 What's owed on it? Uh, zero. We paid it off okay. a long time ago. So you have $300,000 in a pile on your kitchen table. Uncle Benjamin do, Franklin is looking at you with the eye. Do you That's take right. that money and do something with it, or do you go buy a rental house in Idaho? Not Idaho, for sure. Sell it. <laughs> yeah, it's about two and a half hours away. And sell it. When we go up and visit family, we're, we're working there. Sell so, it. Sell it. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing fun in this equation. I love real estate, but the, everything you've described to me is this is all the words had fatigue in them. Yeah. I heard yeah. tired. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired. That's what I heard. I heard that in your voice. I don't know if it's, I don't know who's debating which way on this, but it's a 26 year old dream you're ever going to live in that house. You're not going to live in that house again. If you go back to Idaho, you wouldn't move in that house. Sell it. That's what I would do. Coleman Ramsey, personality, is my co-host today. We're launching his brand new book today. It's launch day here at Ramsey. The book is From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love. Ellen is with us in San Antonio. Hi, Ellen. How are you? I'm doing well today. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, it's um, it's an honor to be speaking with uh, both you and Ken today. I actually called in a few weeks ago asking for advice about staying in my current workplace based on a relationship I had or moving on, and um, that's why I'm calling. I took your advice. I decided to pursue other opportunities that were offered to me at that point. However, um, one of the organizations, my top choice um, they didn't get back to me immediately after the interview, so I followed up with them, following some of Ken's advice about adding value based on what we had talked about in the in the interview. A couple days later, they get back to me, and they um, they offer or they invite me to apply for a program management position instead of the case management position that I had initially applied for. So my question for you guys today is, while Obviously, something in the interview told them that I might be a good fit for this program management position. On paper, when I look at it, I don't see how my my experience and my qualifications match up. So I just I want to know how to show up with humility, but also confidence 
for this job interview when I don't quite believe that I am technically qualified for okay, it. Okay, that's a really good question. Okay, so can you be specific what parts of the job description, when you look at it, you go, I don't know if I can pull that off. What can you tell me? So there are just some very technical qualifications about um, it's a refugee resettlement organization. Okay. So having to do with some policy and some uh, experiencing managing like the applications for for getting people over here. Basically, there's that kind of knowledge. And then I don't have technically this type of management or supervisory experience. Okay. I want to be a program manager someday, Great, but I thought that was more of a five to 10 year plan, not necessarily okay. a right now thing. Okay, great. But they saw something in you. I'm going to repeat what you said to Dave and I. They saw something and they, they're suggesting you come interview for it. They didn't offer it to you <laughs> and you don't have to dance. You know, you can, you can come in and listen and you get to decide. Remember a job interview, Ellen, is just as much for you as it is for the potential employer. So you're not committing, you're not a fraud, you're not wasting their time. Go in there and have a conversation. As it relates to leading people, no one's ever really ready to lead. Once you lead for the first time, you're going to learn the process of leadership. And, and it's, it is a learnable skill. And if you just serve people, if you ask the question, these two questions on a regular basis as a first-time leader, how are you doing? This is the team that you will lead. How are you doing? That's a personal question. Check on these folks. How are they doing? It's not a greeting in the hallway. Second question is, how can I help you win in your role? If you were to just ask those two questions at the very beginning on a consistent basis, you're going to learn the heart of leadership, which is servant leadership. I'm not concerned about that piece. I think you've got to ask yourself, I don't have the knowledge, but if they teach me how to handle the technical portion of that refugee piece and I all that you stuff, could learn every you could bit of learn that in that. two days. I think you could learn that. Just because you don't know it doesn't mean you can't learn it. Do you agree? I do agree. Then go to the interview and have confidence that you're a teachable person. Are you teachable? Uh, yes, I would say I'm very teachable. Good. Okay, and you're so, you're self-aware. You're not strutting in there acting like you're too cool for school, and you're not. You know, so you know what's going on. You go, listen. I've never done those two things, to, but I think you can show me how, and I think I can do them. All right, and I, I'm guessing I don't need to. I don't want to mislead you and act like I've got five years of experience. Yeah. But if you'll right. show me how to do these two things, I think I can learn how to do them, and, and I think yeah. I can do this. And Ellen, ask this question at some point in the interview when you have a chance to talk. Ask, would you describe what a win looks like? And then this is not a job description, but what does winning look like in this role? And have them describe that to you. If there's holes in that and you don't understand, ask follow-up questions. And when you get a sense for that, um, then you're going to have a really good idea whether or not you, A, can do it, and B, want to do it. But go in there and uh, just have a good conversation with them. You don't have to commit. All right. Um, that's basically you don't want, you don't want to know what's weird. You don't want to what's you want to know what's weird. Ken and I and the people at that company think you're more qualified than you think you are. Absolutely <laughs> right. You've got self doubt on you like a big heavy coat. No, she's just trying to be honest. She's a person of integrity, and she looks at things through details, and she knows she can't check those boxes. Yeah, but the fact that we believe in her more than she does. But I doubt. think those boxes are checkable. That's the well, point. Absolutely. Somebody they who are. knows how to get up, leave the kid, yes. kill something, and drag it home, kiddo, you can do this. Yes, 100%. You can do this. Tim is with us. Tim is in Pittsburgh. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Better than we deserve. What's up? Awesome. I am a senior in college. I'm studying finance, and I recently accepted my first big boy job. Cool. Hey. So, what are you going to be doing? I'm going to be. I'm going to be doing finance for a food company. Cool. And what are they paying you? They're paying me 67 I love it. Good for you, nice man. Nice job. Thank you. So this involves a move halfway across the country. Um, I have essentially nothing to my name, but no debt, luckily. I was blessed with that. And I'm just wondering where to start because I'm excited to work for the company, but at the same time, I'm also terrified of making that move. What terrifies you? Well, I don't really have, like I said, I don't have anything physically, so I'm going to need to buy a car, going to need to buy furniture, going to need to get an apartment, all that stuff. So you have any trying money? to set myself up. I'm sorry? You have any money? 
I do. I have a few thousand that I'd be able to put, but um, the, that would allow me to stay with a one thousand dollar emergency fund. But it are wouldn't you, be. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Are you moving to a metro, a, a kind of a metro area where you don't have to have a car for a season until you get employed and start putting a budget together? The problem with the company is that there it isn't a metro, but there aren't any transit lines that really go to it, and okay. there aren't many apartments in that area. Okay. <laughs> so you have a, you said a few thousand. How much? How much money do you actually have? Give me the exact number. Oh gosh, um, probably liquid cash. I would say five to six. Okay. Uh, retirement probably six or seven, and then. Miscellaneous brokerage is probably a five. Miscellaneous brokerage of five thousand. Yeah. Okay, so you have eleven thousand dollars, not counting retirement. Yeah. Dude, go buy a two thousand dollar car, get you an apartment, and get some cheap used furniture. Yeah. Get going. Okay. You got it, man. It ain't no thing. Okay. Listen, go to the rich end of town when you get there to garage sales, and you can buy a six thousand dollar leather couch for four hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to have a TV for the two weeks, and you don't have to have cable for the first week, and you don't have to have da-da-da-da-da-da, right? Okay? Mm-hmm. And um, so just, you know, you, you, you got, you know, just put off some of the stuff, but you go in there, get a basic apartment, and, and you know, just get you uh, a mattress and throw it on the floor, and then you start getting paychecks, you're going to get 5000 bucks a month paychecks. And you can start buying stuff then, okay, and cash flowing. But, you know, all you got to have is some one little place to sleep, get you an apartment, get you a little beater car, and that'll get you started. And then this time next year, buy you a good car mm-hmm. with cash. Okay. You're used to living on nothing. You're getting ready to make 67000 How much of that can you save between the, the next year and this time in one year? Cool. Yeah, um, probably Lots. a lot more than yeah. Yeah, so because you're used to living on nothing, it's easy, right? So just say, say I'm gonna I'm gonna save up for a fifteen thousand dollar car. Good, and probably do that by like freaking Christmas, you know? Not quite, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> when do you go? When do you move? Late June. Good for you. Okay, so you've even got more time to pile up money. Yeah, and you're not looking for a sexy car here. You're looking for a reliable car. It might even be a little beat up, but it's great mechanically. All you want to do is get back and forth to work till you make enough paychecks to go get you a good car. That's all you're doing. Just pay cash for everything. Move slow. Don't try to impress anybody. Nothing you buy in this first four months is going to impress a girl except the right kind of girl. This is The Ramsey Show. Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. My co-host today on the Ramsey Show, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, Ken Coleman. It is book launch day here at Ramsey. He has a new book that is officially on sale today. You order it, we'll ship it today. If you pre-ordered it, they all went out this morning or last night or whatever so that you'll be getting them in your mailbox very, very soon. Amazon also released, and of course, so did all the major book outlets like Barnes & Noble and Target and so on. Uh, You'll see this book everywhere. From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Doing 
work you love. From paycheck to purpose, the clear path to doing work you love. You'll be seeing Ken on media all over the place. He's been doing media since 5 a.m. this morning. And we're also here answering your questions about your career, your job, and, of course, money and life. It's what we're here for. 888 825 225. Getting towards the end of the first day of the book launch. Are you yeah. tired? I am. I'm glad you mentioned that I've been up since 4.15 because if I begin to babble, we'll blame it on that. That's probably not what the problem is, but we'll blame it on just getting up early. See, I don't even have an excuse. <laughs> if I babble, James just says, stop babbling. Right. Uh, it happens. Uh, when you do live radio as much as you've done it or any of us get to do it, there's those moments where the brain sometimes just betrays you. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, man, James has been torturing me all morning. What? Yeah, I've been in the studio down there recording an audio oh, book. Oh, that's r- Oh, you're extra tired, an too. An audio book for four freaking years. Your brain feels like licorice. Man, man I'm just, it's I know awful. that. I it's, can't. It's brutal. I'm not good at it. Oh, really? No, I'm awful. Huh. And I, like I say words backwards and, oh, okay. God, it's, and he stops me and I have to start over and it's just... <laughs> I tried to hire Morgan Freeman, but he's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a lot like Dave. That James Earl Jones was not available, so we got Dave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would love to be a fly on the wall after about the 17th interruption from James for Dave to do a line over. No, because the problem is he doesn't interrupt me unless he's right. And oh. it's not something I can really argue about. I know. It's true, I isn't it? I screwed it up. And Every so you, time. You really just have to take the whipping. It's the truth. There's just no way around it. That's so. part of it. Adam's with us in Boise. Idaho. Hey, Adam, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Sure, what's up? Uh, So I have a question. Um, My wife and I have a couple of different options for our health insurance for coming up next year. And I'm wondering if it's smarter for us to each get our own plans um, and have the children on her plan and we would have a cheaper option that way, and then we would both get employer HSA contributions, or if the smarter option or your preferred or, I guess, recommended option would be to put a family on one plan if it costs more but and you don't get as many um, employer HSA contributions for the year, but we would have How much uh, more does one it deductible. Cost? Uh, the plan cost to put me on her plan would be like another $865 a year. And then we'd miss out on a thousand dollars of HSA contributions from my employer. I'm not worried about that. And how much, how much deductible exposure is there on each of these? So her deductibles are 3000 individual and 6,000 family. Uh, my plan would be 1750 individual. And thirty five hundred for a family, but you don't have family on your plan. I have an option, but it's I know. But under your like proposal, three, it would be her and the kids yeah. on hers, and you on yours. But you're picking up an extra little bit of deductible in return. You're losing eight hundred grand or eight hundred dollars. I'm sorry, not eight hundred grand. Uh, not hardly. Uh, I mean, for the hassle factor, I'd be tempted to put it all on one plan just because messing with everything. And the fact, if, if you get into a deductible situation, your max out of pocket um, is going to end up free. But I'm guessing you guys are a young family and you're pretty healthy, so you're probably not blowing through these deductibles, are you? Correct. Yeah, and this is the first year since that we were on, like, this HSA options. We were on completely different insurance. Yeah, but I'm not talking uh, about that. I'm just talking about, I'm to, talking about your use of health insurance. You guys don't go blow a bunch of money on medical at this stage of your life. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay, I'm going yeah. the cheaper route then mm-hmm. with you separate from your wife and kids. Okay. And you get you get both get sense. the HSA, so you understand. You, you've done the analysis. You said it out loud. I'm making sure you understood the analysis. You did was what you're accepting is you're saving eight hundred dollars, but you're taking extra risk on the deductible. I'm betting that that's a good move because you're probably not going to blow through the deductible. Right. That was kind of my thought process yeah. as well. Okay. That was that's what I thought I heard you saying, and that's what I that's what I heard too. So um, yeah, I'm with you on that. I think we're going to go the cheaper route. Now, are both of these reasonably good care? The networks are got your docs in them, that kind of stuff. Or you feel like you're cheaping out on one of them? 
No, they're both probably equally as good. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's what I would do then. Good question. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. It, it is the season right now. You have open season, right? Yeah. For, on ducks yeah. and on geese <laughs> and on pheasant yeah. and on health care. Yes, that's yeah. true. We did something very similar to that before we had three kids and we just had the one and Stacy and so that that really is a good move because why we have the emergency fund and so we took that yeah. cheaper option the risk isn't really that risky because that's why we have an emergency fund then as we started getting multiple kids ear infections eardrums all that then we had to adjust because we had several years there we had higher expenses yeah the, the thing is that the the HSA if you are healthy or if you're chronically ill mm -hmm where you're always blown through the deductible, and if your HSA has, uh, you know, 100% pay after you blow the deductible, which most of them do, not all of them, but a lot of them do. Ours does not. We have a copay after you blow the deductible. But a lot of them are 100% after that. Uh, if you're chronically ill and you're going to blow that deductible, that comes out cheaper. Yes, it does. And if you're not going to touch the deductible, which the Ramseys have been knock on wood pretty healthy bunch over the years, we've not really used our health insurance hardly at all. Mm -hmm. Very seldom in a year have we actually right. tapped into that and hit the deductible. So um, given that, what you end up with net-net with a HSA, a high deductible health insurance plan, yep with a HSA attached to it, what you end up with is basically cheaper health insurance. That's correct. Because you're basically running a high deductible. Any insurance you can run a higher deductible on and you have the emergency fund to cover it is going to create a lower premium. Duh. The question is, are, is it work, are you getting a low enough premium to offset the extra risk you're taking on the deductible? That's true on your car insurance, your homeowner's insurance. It's true on anything where there's a deductible involved, but health insurance as well. And so that's the way you guys really need to pay attention right now during open season for most of you as to what you're doing. This is The Ramsey Show. On baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. personality is my co-host today open phones at 888-825-5225 we've all heard the saying it's better to give than to receive and you know what it's more fun too and while you can have a great time giving the latest gadgets or gizmos to the folks on your christmas list you may also want to give them something that mm, has an impact Something that might change their lives. And that's why every year we bring back our famous $10 sale. It gives you the chance to shop over 40 of our best-selling books and envelopes for envelope systems for only $10 or less. You'll find books like our number one bestseller, The Total Money Makeover. And for the first time ever, Rachel Cruz's newest book, Know Yourself, Know Your Money, is on sale for just 10 bucks. This year, you can gift a lifetime of hope. Just check out the $10 sale at RamseySolutions.com. And don't forget, here at Ramsey, we like to give gifts, too. We have such a blast giving stuff away that we've already started giving away cash for Christmas. Every year, we celebrate Christmas with the Ramsey Show listeners with an awesome tradition, the Ramsey Christmas Cash Giveaway. This year, we're giving away $500 every week and a grand prize of $5,000. You can enter every day to increase your chances of winning. Text CASH to 33. 
seven eighty nine. You want to register for the five hundred bucks a week, five thousand dollar grand prize? Text cash to three three seven eight nine. Jody is in Dayton, Ohio. Hi, Jody. How are you? Uh, better than I deserve, Dave. Um, thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? I have a, a little bit of a question I'm going through a disillusion or divorce, basically, and it's kind of left me in a financial ruin, I feel like. Um, I was with the guy for 16 years and cheated on me, and it's just been really devastating. And I'm I had, sorry. like, a really good financial goal to be debt-free in, like, seven years, you mm-hmm. know, start my family. Um it's just not worked out that way. And mm. so what I'm looking at is I make 73 a year. I have a 401k of uh, 55000 I've got quite a bit of cash on hand. Um, liquid cash would be about $46,000, which I was probably either going to pay off my student debt, which is $38,000, or, you know, pay off part of it and maybe invest and hope that in a few years that investment grows and I can just really tackle down some more debt with that. My house right now, the appraisal on it was six hundred and twenty five thousand and I owe one hundred and eighty nine on it. Um, but with the payout to my husband after this uh, disillusion, I'll be paying him out about ninety five thousand. Um, I'm kind of left with I think a let's see here a three hundred and twenty two thousand dollar loan now on the house by myself making $73,000 a year. My payment, um, if I consolidate like my college into my house and kind of just sit on that because it's been so much of a change, I feel like I might have to go to a mental hospital basically. Like it's just been so much. I, I, we actually built this house last year. We finished it and moved in. And, um, it was like the dream house, you know, to raise a family in with him. So I, I just, you know, my payment's looking at like 1900 to possibly twenty. Twenty-two or $2,100 at the max is what the bank is telling me. If I go hey, Jody, ahead and just, how, yeah. how old are you? What did you say? How old are you? I'm going to be 32 on December 1st. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah, thanks. I am too. <laughs> You're not going to like me, but I'm going to love you well, okay? Yeah. Sell the house. Okay. You know why? Well, I'd not have the stress of the financial debt, I'm sure. Yeah, you get to start fresh with a clean whiteboard. You don't walk in there every day looking at a custom-made home that was a dream home that you built with a guy who committed adultery on you. Yeah. Your heart's broken, and every time you walk in the living room, it's going to break again, and you're paying a huge payment for the privilege. Mm Mm-hmm. And... I mean, the best way to start fresh like, after a broken heart is start fresh. Okay. And it's just, I'm just cleaning. I, I just want to clean. I just want your life to be clean and simple to give you a place where you can heal from this. Cause this has been really hard for you. And what, what kind of time frame should I be looking at to make this transition? Because it's like right now, um, I just don't know. Like, with so many changes, I had to get the vaccine so I didn't lose my job, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did that. But it's just like, I just, I feel like if I have, like, one more major change. Yeah, yeah. I, what I would do is just try to get life as simple as I can until you start breathing again. Right now, you're not taking deep breaths. You're just kind of, you got the stress on, it's like somebody standing on your chest. And um, that just makes you human. You just have this huge, horrible thing you're going through. And it's just real. And, and what our friend Dr. John Deloney would call trauma. And it really, really is. And so give yourself some space. If it takes you a year to do nothing and make, make out a life that makes you boring and bored. And then you can just sit and heal. And give yourself some room without push and pull, without striving towards some goal or something. So mm-hmm. you're a pretty goal-oriented person. You like to have a plan and execute the plan. So you're going to wander your way back to that pretty quick as soon as your psyche is healed enough to allow you to do that. But give yourself a little room to cry. Is that okay? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it is kind of my plan to 
I'm probably, yeah, 15 acres for just myself. It was never meant to be just for me. It's yeah. actually made me quite angry. Um, yeah, there you go. I guess I'm in that phase of, of grief right now. But Yeah, just sell and it. And I'm like, well, if I meet somebody soon, then, That's, yeah. Yeah, but you don't want to live there it. with somebody, and you're not going to meet, right, that, right? It's too soon. Yeah. It's too soon. Right now, you're right. still just, you're still just, your head's spinning. So, so Give yourself a little pay room. Him out. And and get rid of him out of the picture because that's what yeah. I need to do. But then he needs to go away. So kind of keep the house for a handful of months, or just list I'd it. I put it on the market right now. I put it on the market right now. I wouldn't go refinance it. I wouldn't go the expense of refinancing it. He can wait to get paid out when the house sells. And guess well, what? It'll sell in twenty minutes. If if I uh, go ahead and refinance it, he's agreed to take ninety. But if I just sell it, then he'll try and take half of the equity because he would be owed that. Um, well, so I think, like I think this is a negotiation like with a philanderer. Say again? I think this is a negotiation with a philanderer. I think you punch his lights mm-hmm. out and get him to take 90 and you sell the house. Absolutely right. He deserves nothing. Hold his feet to the no, fire. No lawyer would say otherwise. I don't give a crap what his lawyer says. This is a negotiation. Mm-hmm. Everything's a negotiation. You want your 90, I'm putting the house on the market, you're going to get your 90. As You're going to get it as soon as you would if I refinance it. I'm not going to go to the refinance cost. You're going to take your 90, and you're going to walk away with your girlfriend, and you're going to kiss my butt. And this is the negotiation. I hope your lawyer's mean. Uh, she is. Good. Yeah. yeah, Good. I don't have it in me right now. I usually can be, but yeah, yeah. I don't have it. Well, I don't want you me. to have to fight it. Tell your lawyer to go sick them. Skid them. Yeah, yeah, and if you have to refinance it to to cut it way down, if the, you lose the negotiation, fine, go do it. But you're just losing the refinance costs because you're going to turn around and pay right. the stupid mortgage off in 30 days anyway because you're putting the house on the market right. now, right now. It just seems like a lot to try and because it will sell. I would say in a couple three months max because it is a, a high amount and a, a big portion of land which a lot of people don't want to take care of. But no, it's it's a premium yeah, it, real it estate market. It's going to sell. It's going to sell in twenty minutes. Yeah. Put it on I'm the market. Put it on the market. Away, though to like do it that quickly because it's like, you know, um, Jody, divorce. Uh, it's a it, house. It's so quick, Clean it's up like, your wow. life. Clean up your life as soon as you can, as quickly as you can. Simplify everything and give yourself some room to grieve that this guy did you in. He mis- mis- mistreated you. I'm so sorry. It's horrible. Just horrible. Ugh. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. This is the Ramsey Show. Common sense for your dollars and cents. David and Marla are with us in Hartford, Connecticut. Says on my screen, you guys are debt free. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very cool. How much have you paid off? We have paid off eighty-eight thousand dollars in twenty-two months. Good eighty-eight thousand eleven dollars. Really, that eleven counts for something, right? It does. That's, that's <laughs> big, a big difference. Big difference. Eighty-eight thousand in twenty-two months, and your range of income during that two years was what? When we started, just about a hundred thousand, and now we're just over one hundred nineteen thousand. Excellent. What do you guys do for a living? So I'm a school bus driver in a little farm town in Ellington, Connecticut. Cool. I uh, work for a insurance company. Okay, cool, great. Auto, for auto auto insurance stuff. Oh, good, very good. What kind of debt was your eighty eight thousand? It was all the bad kind: <laughs> <laughs> credit cards, a car loan, personal loan, and a family loan. Oh, what kind of family yeah. loan? Uh, so my husband's parents helped us out when we were first buying our condo when we were getting married, mm-hmm. and lent us some money, and we 
pay them back. Woo! That feels good. It feels real good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's better to eat Thanksgiving dinner with somebody you don't owe money to. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, your uh, Thanksgiving dinner tastes different when you eat with your master. Oh, my yeah, goodness. It sure does. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations, you guys. Okay, Thank what you. happened? What started you on this Ramsey journey 22 months ago? Yeah, so I used to do our budget, and I was really good at making it, but I was really bad at sticking to it. And we were you know, making more and more money, but still living paycheck to paycheck because I was constantly overspending. I am like the major free spirit of our family. David is the nerd. And, uh, you know, we were doing all the dance of that transferring credit card balances back and forth, and we had accrue more debt because of transfer fees. And I was racking up tons of credit card debt because I was li- really living like we were millionaires, but um, we weren't. And uh, I was paying for things with a lot of money that we didn't have. And I did. I feel like I did the cardinal sin. I was using our credit card to take cash out of the ATM at one point. Oh, my gosh. Ah! <laughs> I know. I know. And uh, so one day we were at church and um, our executive pastor, Andrew, was teaching us about biblical budgeting. And he mentioned Financial Peace University that was being taught at our church. And um, after that service, we went home. We had a really, really hard conversation. Mm. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a secret that we were buried in debt, but to like kind of lay it all out there, it was really, really hard, really humbling. And thankfully, you know, God showed up. My husband could have probably, you know, laid into me about how it was my fault, but he just, you know, he kind of was like, well, it's my fault too. You know, I knew what was going on. We didn't really do anything to stop it. And he wasn't and helping. He, he dumped it you know, on you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, lots of tears on my end, but lots of grace on his end. So I'm so grateful. Um, so we decided to sign up for the class and we took the class that was 22 months ago. We literally like dove in headfirst, never looked back. And, um, you know, my Dave has been listening to you, Dave, for years, like, like years and years and years, and I was the one that was not on board. So once I got on board, I think it was a relief to my husband, and we just never looked back, you know. And then and we just got really gazelle intense, and here we are. Wow, very yeah, cool, it's awesome. So you go through the class, and you, you were at the point. It sounds like that, uh, Marla, from trying to carry it and juggle it all by yourselves. You were at a point of surrender, and David's at a point like, "Hey, we got to get together. We got to do this." And so cool. both of you were ready to completely. You didn't do ish. You didn't do anything. You yeah. just stepped in, did the whole thing exactly like we teach, and you had great results. Absolutely, hundred percent. Enough is enough. Yeah. yeah, enough was enough. We were ready. <laughs> Way to go, you guys! Yeah, All right, so you're you. going through. You're, we're proud of you. You're excellent. You're incredible. Yeah. So we're going through. You're going through the thing, the class, and little light bulbs are coming on. Uh, yeah. What was the thing that you heard that you went, "Oh man, where was that ten years ago? I need to do that." <laughs> Oh, my gosh. I mean, it was everything. Honestly, it was everything. I believed every lie about money that there is out there. I believe that we have to have debt. Oh, everybody has a credit card payment. Everybody has a car payment. You know, oh, debt is just a part of life. So, yeah, that there that there's such thing as good debt and all that. So we uh, once we heard, you know, oh, no, that's not. Yeah, normal is weird. You don't want to be normal. You know, it's not normal to, you don't have to live that way. That, for me, was a big light bulb moment. Like, wait a minute, we don't have to have a credit score? Oh, that's that's not true? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and then right. it was like, okay, now I just want to get zero credit score. I want to do that. <laughs> so I love this. Uh, Marley, you are, you may be the most enthusiastic person that I've talked to in a long time. It is very oh, infectious. Thanks. No, it's wonderful. <laughs> so, okay, you clearly, all the light bulbs is what you told Dave. Everything yeah, was a light bulb. So now I want to know. Okay, you go out of the class, now we got to go home. And David, you've been following Dave for a long time, so none of this is new to you. Marla's light bulbs are flashing like crazy. What was the hardest part about getting this thing started? Or was there a moment where it was really, really tough? Or was it just all in the whole time and it didn't matter how hard it was? You guys were just uh, gazelle intense with no struggle. I, I want to know what it was like. Uh, the, the tough one was for our son, the saying no to things. But I would say, besides that, the... Holding back, and I told you so, and just working together and just getting it taken care of. Mm. Yeah, definitely. 
Definitely. Also, you know, just for me, a, a really hard part was waiting, like the patience of getting through the baby step, like the baby step one, baby step two. I just like, I wanted it so badly. So I know maybe that's like contradictory that it's kind of a good and a bad, but like the closer we got, the more I wanted it, you know? <laughs> and um, we, sacrifice yeah, make. definitely. It was just, you know, for me, it was the, the best, craziest part was taking all that stress off, you know? are we going to have enough money to, to buy groceries this week? Or do I have to wait to pay the mortgage or, you know, and we only have one son. So, you know, our son Lincoln, he's 10. And like David said, saying no to him was tough. And he, he was like, I hate the Dave Ramsey. <laughs> there it is. He was like, he's like, every time my husband would listen to Dave Ramsey, he'd be like, turn that off. <laughs> so that was tough, but totally worth it. And, you know, we're not done yet. You know, we're, we're just, we're still going. We're still super psyched. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, you ruined his life and you saved his life at the same time. Exactly. That's awesome. Yes. That's so fabulous. <laughs> well done, you guys. Well, we got a copy of the Legacy Journey for you because that's the next chapter in your story. You're going to be Baby Steps Millionaires now. You're on yes. your way. You're awesome. on your way. Well, well done, you guys. Well done. Thank you. Excellent, excellent work. Also, a copy of Total Money Makeover for you. Uh, that's the next. Uh, that way, you got something to give away and ruin some other little kid's life out there. That'll be great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't wait to do that. <laughs> Very fun. All right, David and Marla, Hartford, Connecticut, eighty-eight thousand paid off in twenty-two months, making one hundred to one nineteen. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're, We're done. Free. Free. <laughs> <laughs> Marla went up high there. That was yeah. another option. Go big or go home in Hartford. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Dogs are howling everywhere in Hartford, Connecticut on that last note. That was that was true passion there. So good. Oh man. Hey, here's the thing. When you find something that works yeah. and that's proven, and just like your new book, Paycheck to Pur Purpose, the clear path mm -hmm. to doing work you love. You want to find a new position. You want to find a new career. You want to get out of debt and become wealthy. These clear paths, this, yeah. this detailed step-by-step -step plan that's proven, mm -hmm. um, it, it is how transformation works in our world. That's right. You don't transform just by, like a genie in a bottle, like no. you said earlier. No. Uh, there's no genie out there. No. There's no uh, pill you can take to get out of debt or have the job you love. You have to go through the transformational process, the steps, and it works when you do it. Way to go, Financial Peace University. Proud of you guys. David and Marla, they love you. This is The Ramsey Show. Luke 16, 10, and 11, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you've not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? General Norman Schwarzkopf said, The truth of the matter is that you always know the right thing to do. The hard part is doing it. Yeah, that's kind of what this whole show's about. We answer questions I already know the answer to. <laughs> Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Rebecca's in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Well, hello, Mr. Dave Ramsey. <laughs> 
I, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm talking to you. Okay, pull myself together. It's all right, um, Rebecca, breathe. A, there you go. Oh, you got you through, guys. kiddo. Yes. You got through. Okay, how can we help? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, um, so I have a bit of a, a fun story, I guess. Um, I, My husband and I, uh, we're 26 years old. We have two children, two beautiful girls. And whenever my husband got out of high school, he bought this house that we're living in. And um, it's right across the street from my mother-in-law. Um, so, you know, things were okay, but this beginning of the past, past year, um, my father-in-law, he, um, he got really sick and no one knew about it until day four when, uh, my mother-in-law called and said, Hey, um, you know, Larry's not doing really well. And so my husband went over and checked on him and, uh, lo and behold, he was really, really sick. He was dehydrated and he was, he was not given any like nutrition for four days. He, she was just giving him like ibuprofen. She didn't really know what to do. I would say, um, I was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt, but, um, whenever my husband walked into the house, it was like extreme hoarder, um, addition, no airflow to the room and all that kind of stuff. So he went to the hospital and I just said, you know what? And I, I put my mama pants on and I said, she's not allowed to take care of him. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And I knew that he couldn't go back to the house. And my husband and I, we just looked at each other and we said, this is why we have an emergency fund, because it's an emergency and we don't want him to pass away. He was, he's 82. Um, so four, four or five days later after the ER, the doctors are like, hey, he's not doing well. Say goodbye. And we're like, no, 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 no. So we took him home. We gave him sunshine. He had COVID and everything. Gave him sunshine, gave him, you know, just just pursued God's, you know, what what God tells us to do with our bodies and just try to pump him with vitamins and everything and he got better like uh the rebecca, the, the therapist, rebecca we're gonna run out yeah. of time honey what, what how can oh, we help you Jesus. how can we help <laughs> it you? Like me. um we have an opportunity to buy a house that's quite it's, it's worth more than what she's asking but it's a fixer upper um so um i know like, so i just i'm sick and tired of being so close to <laughs> My mother-in-law and my father-in-law, and it's not sick and tired. It's just like I just don't. You feel moved like, your father-in-law um, in with you. He, we did, and also that, we that, got him back. That's and the definition of living close to him. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> did you send him back? So we did. We did. We sent him back after he got well. He's oh, so back he's at back down at the started, hoarder house now. Yeah, yeah, and it was by choice, and we tried it. We really tried to just like change everything but it, you can't change it okay you so you're you're, you're not responsible for what happens across the street you're responsible for what happens in your house so they're not bothering you we figured that out no they're not bothering so us. so why do you need than, to move you know, good good question um it's just i guess the whole it's just you know whenever they pass when when she passes by it's always a, a stop and kind of embarrassing like yelling or or uh, demanding, like, to see her grandchildren. And, and it, it could be more casual or it could be more, like, you know, set times, but there's no boundary lines, I guess, and we have to constantly put them in place. And, like... Um, so she's, just, like, standing it, it, in the street yelling at your house? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, it's, not, it's not always that bad, but it's just, for me, I guess... How it's old just, is she? Um... She, uh, 63 and he's 80. Um, so what just, does your I husband, what just, does your husband say? He, he, he tries. It's his mom. So uh, I know. What does he say about like moving? That, oh, he wants to do it. We found an awesome deal okay, and we move. just don't know if we should sell our house. Why not? <laughs> move. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, I got a crazy woman standing in the street yelling at my house. Yeah, I'd have a I'm sign look, in the yard. I'm looking for, a, I mean, even if I'm not kin to her, I'm looking for a new place. I mean, <laughs> That's the truth. Especially if I'm kin to her. Yeah, but it's I like mean, doubles the move. Yeah. yeah. It's like, Rebecca, yes. I don't know what you're afraid of, wow, but that's, make a good that's financial just, decision. But well, yes. it's good for your family. I mean, yeah, you guys, goodness you've, gracious. there's a lot going on here that we don't have Dr. John here to help us with. So. Wow. Um, yeah, there's boundary issues. There's all kinds of stuff. There's strange, strange hoarders. And yeah, if it happened to the old guy once, it's probably going to happen again. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but you can still move him into the house at the country too. And then I, she'll be by herself I, standing in the street yelling at herself, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I I'm moving. Yes.
as long as you can afford to make the move. Yes. Now, don't use this as an excuse to do something financially stupid, mm -hmm. but if you've got a lateral move or a move you can afford to make, let's go ahead and make it. Michael's in Dallas. Hey, Michael, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you guys today? Great. How can we help? So this is more of a Ken question, I guess. It's not so much a money question. Um, I was listening to the show a couple weeks ago when him and um, George were filling in for you. And he made a comment about his job and how much he loved it and how he kind of felt bad for, you know, someone that might be sitting there listening, digging a ditch right now. And actually, that was me. Um, I've been wanting to change careers. You were actually digging a ditch. Different. Oh, yeah. Well, with an excavator, I do. I do construction. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was actually yeah, talking yeah. about the old school shovel, but the excavator <laughs> sounds kind of fun to me, to be honest with you. But I get the point. Well, it, it is. It, it's fun. It, yeah. it, um, it gets monotonous at times when sure. you do it 60, 70 hours a week. Right. But, you know, every every little young man loves heavy equipment. That's you know, right. They really have to do it for the rest of their career. Yeah, so, right. Um, my wife currently makes 90 K. Mm -hmm. um, we're I'm 24. She's 23. Um, we have little to no debt. I have a truck that's about to be paid off. Okay. So I'm I'm wanting to just try and figure out what suits me best. I actually took your career assessment. I bought the new book okay. uh, in the bundle, and I'm going to oh, read wow. it. Good. All right. So, so when you got your purpose yeah, statement so, and you read your purpose statement back, uh, what ideas started flowing through your mind? Did it confirm some things? Did it open up new questions? Uh, a little bit of both, yes. Okay. So I've always been more – empathetic i guess and more passionate about current events and what's going on in the world and you know um what do you wonder about michael but you're unsure how to get there or if it may be seen is it bad pizza i know you've got an idea i can hear it what's the idea that you're not sure about but you'd do it if you knew there was no risk and well, you didn't have to commit to it yeah so i mean if there was if i woke up today and i could be anybody i wanted to be um i would i guess for me to feel like i'm making a difference, something that, you know, really would feel good to me to wake up and do every day would be something along the lines of politics, whether it be state and local government. And that's actually the number two thing that your assessment gave me. But, um, okay. you know, or either something entrepreneurship, I just, the day in, day out, I get you know, it. All right, so it. so here's what we got to do. We've got two really good options. Our time is limited, Michael, so I'm going to do this really quick, okay? You've got two viable options, entrepreneurship, and what you've got to do is say, if I could start a business today, what would who would be the people I'd want to help? What's the problem the business would be solving, and what's the solution that I would be providing through this business that would solve that problem? That's a good little three-question exercise and see what business ideas come up. But political, on this political consultants piece, make more than politics. I think so, and I think you ought to look at what are some avenues for me, non-elected office, to get in the political system, local, state government. I've got some experience. I've got relationships. What would that look like? We've got to start to look. And as we begin to dig, Michael, now we're going to see, oh, I could get there. I want to get there. That's what we got to do. The new book is From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love. It comes out today. Go get it. Ken, good show. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.